Next on PIJN News, Dr. Chaps reports on these important issues. Hamas hid their rocket launchers at hospitals and children's playgrounds. Joe Biden is pressuring Netanyahu surrender to Hamas or else. And Planned Parenthood joins Hamas after an Israeli airstrike on their clinic. Former Navy Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt took a stand to defend religious freedom by daring to pray publicly in Jesus' name. Now he helps you by reporting the news, discerning the spirits, and praying the scriptures. Would you pray with us? Here's Dr. Chaps. God bless you in Jesus' name. My name is Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt, Dr. Chaps, and you're watching PIJN News. On this show, we like to do three things. We report the news, we discern the spirits, and we pray the scriptures in Jesus' name. Are you ready to pray the news with us? Here's our first story. Hamas, the terrorist organization, is now hiding rockets in a hospital and on children's playgrounds, knowing that Israel can't retaliate and take out their Hamas terrorist military operations because they're so close to the poor and sick. Israel Times and Christian Post both report the Israeli Defense Forces revealed new intelligence last week saying that they provide further evidence that Hamas terrorist groups are using medical facilities in the Gaza Strip for terrorist purposes. IDF spokesman Rear Admiral Daniel Hagari briefed international media outlets with video footage of the Hamas gunmen emerging from a tunnel near the Sheikh Hamad Hospital as well as firing at Israeli forces from within the building of the hospital itself. War then erupted between Hamas and uh, Israel last month, of course, when Palestinian terror groups lost a massive terrorist attack against innocent civilians on the Israel side of the border that killed over 1,400 Jews. Israel had repeatedly said Hamas is now using civilians as human shields, including locating operations bases underneath the hospitals and also near children's playgrounds. Captured Hamas terrorists have confirmed that the claims explaining that Hamas knows Israel will not retaliate by bombing so close to a hospital, and that's why they feel safe launching from a hospital. Admiral Hagari said the following, quote, Today I will be sharing evidence providing that Hamas systematically exploits hospitals as part of its war machine. We decided to declassify and share more sensitive intelligence with you, including videos, because the world must take immediate action, end quote. Another video showed Hamas gunmen opening fire at Israeli forces from inside the hospital. The terrorist group had positioned their rocket launchers near children's playgrounds and other civilian sites to use innocent bystanders as human shields for their Hamas terrorist operations. That was also confirmed by recent footage by the IDF. Hamas terrorists invaded Western Negev on October 7th, torturing and murdering 1,400 Israeli and foreign civilians including Americans, including Canadians and women and children. More than 5,000 were wounded, over 240 people seized as hostages by the invading Muslim terrorists. Since that invasion, Hamas has also fired over 8,000 rockets at Israel, according to the IDF. And that's the news. Our thanks to Israel Times and Christian Post for that information. Let's take a moment and discern the spirits. In this story, we have human actors, we have uh, Hamas people, we have Israeli people, and they're at war with each other, right? How did this start? Who did it first? Um, it, you know, you can set all that aside, you can point fingers. Um, you know where my proclivities lie, they're with the Bible, right? Uh, and the Bible, I believe, gives that land to Israel. But even setting that aside, the way to discern good and evil and discern that some people are being influenced by demons here, is that they're hiding behind sick people in hospitals. They're hiding behind children. And, and you know how you tell the good people in this story? Because 
They won't attack the hospitals. They won't attack the children. Even at risk of their own safety, the IDF is showing restraint and they have to do their sweeps. They have to get in and clean out the terrorists from the tunnels underneath the hospital. But they're taking their time and being patient about that. And I discern the spirit of God on the way that Israel is conducting this operation. I discern the demonic spirit behind the Gaza terrorists who are not only killing innocent civilians, but then hiding behind hospitals and children as cowards that, that are influenced by the demonic spirit of evil. The Bible calls them out in Zephaniah 2. The prophet said, for Gaza shall be forsaken, Ashkelon desolate, and they shall drive out Ashdod at noonday and Ekron shall be uprooted. So right there, and we'll have some other scriptures coming up. There is a history of the violence in Gaza that God condemns. Let's go ahead and pray about this. Father in heaven, we pray for the innocent civilians, the children, the sick in the hospitals, that they will not be pawns or human shields behind which the terrorists hide to launch their rocket attacks. Father, instead we pray that uh, Gaza, if they're gonna be at war, will conduct themselves like professional soldiers. Let their military face off against the military and not attack innocent civilians, not kidnap hostages and hold them and hide behind them. Father, we pray for a, a, an honesty in the combat actions that reflects maybe the values of the God of the Bible. Father, you, you say there is a time for war, there's a time for peace, this is a time for war, but we pray that the cowards will be defeated. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's take a short break. When we come back, Joe Biden is pressuring Prime Minister Netanyahu, surrender to Hamas or else. Dr. Chaps will be right back with more PIJN News. If you've watched our program, you know that we stand with Israel as God's chosen people. We need you to sign a petition today. Why? Because did you know that even as Iran is now developing 800 mile range cruise missiles, could be nuclear tip very soon, that our US Congress has now three brand new freshman congresswomen, we call them the three anti-Semitic musketeers, Ocasio-Cortez and two Muslims, Talib and Omar. And they are influencing Nancy Pelosi to have the most anti-Semitic Congress in years. We need to stand with our friends in Israel and that's why we're asking you to sign a petition. Visit PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org. Don't divide Jerusalem, stand with Israel and stand up to the United Nations. We will fax it to the Congress, but you need to sign today. Take a stand, visit PrayInJesusName.org and sign our petition today. I'm Dr. Chaps. Do you wanna get free news alerts faster than everybody else? Do you wanna get invitations to private events to come meet me in person? Do you wanna get a free religious freedom window decal? Pick up your phone, it's right there by your hand and text this word Text the word PRAY to 24365. Text the word PRAY to 24365 and we'll sign you up. Then call us at 866-ObeyGod. Again, that's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D to get a free Religious Freedom sticker. Call today. Did you know Religious Freedom is under fire in our military today? Our troops do not have protection. For example, military chapels are now being desecrated by homosexual wedding ceremonies on bases in all 50 states. Our troops are now also faced punishment if they dare to object to sharing common sleeping quarters or common shower facilities, or if chaplains dare to quote the Bible during private counseling that declares that homosexuality is a sin. Nobody in our military should be forced to violate their Christian conscience, especially their right to pray publicly in Jesus' name. Let's take action today for religious freedom. Would you sign a petition with me? Visit PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org. Let's defend religious freedom for our troops. Take action today. Dr. Chaps needs you to sign today's petition right now. Again, visit PrayInJesusName.org to sign our petition right now. Empowering you, the grassroots activist. Here is Dr. Chaps. Welcome back, I'm Dr. Chaps. Our next story comes from the BBC and Politico who confirm in dual reports that Joe Biden is now pressuring Benjamin Netanyahu to essentially surrender to Hamas or else Biden will remove political support from 
the prime minister. These are coming from what I perceive to be direct threats to remove political support from Israeli PM Benjamin Netanyahu by Joe Biden himself during private phone calls, which are now published by Politico, unless Israel caves into Hamas demands for a ceasefire. For example, Joe Biden and top aides have directly discussed the likelihood that Benjamin Netanyahu's political days are now numbered, even though he was just reelected as prime minister with a landslide. But no, the American president has conveyed that sentiment directly to Netanyahu himself in a recent conversation. The topic of Netanyahu's short political shelf life has come up in recent White House meetings involving Biden, according to two senior administration officials who confirm these talks have taken place. That has included discussions that have taken place since Joe Biden's recent trip to Israel where he met face to face with Netanyahu, but now the other conversations are taking place over the telephone later. Biden has gone so far as to suggest that Netanyahu should think about the lessons he would share with his eventual successor. The two administration officials added when they confirmed this report to Politico. So Joe Biden, ring, ring, hey, BB, I think you should think about retiring and passing on your lessons to your successor. You're kidding me, right? Why would Netanyahu do that? I don't think he's going to, but Joe Biden is pressuring him and the implied threat is you're losing political support in world opinion by having a war against Gaza. Well, well, Israel didn't start this war against Gaza. Israel's defending themselves, which they have every right to do. But the current US official and former US official both confirmed that the Biden administration believes Netanyahu not only has a limited time in office, but that the current official said the expectation internally was that the Israeli PM would be out within a matter of months well, that's a pipe dream, maybe Biden wants him out, but it's all about this idea of a pause on the retaliatory fire by Israel against Gaza terrorists. Joe Biden is now publicly caused, called for a pause in the Israeli-Hamas conflict. The president was in fact making a speech in Minneapolis last month when a heckler urged him to call for a ceasefire. So here's Biden on the stage Someone in the crowd says, hey, you gotta stop the Israeli uh, counter counterattack, call for a ceasefire. And Biden replies from the stage, well, I agree with you. We gotta, we gotta have a ceasefire to get the hostages out. Biden said, quote, I think we need a pause, end quote, in responding to the heckler in the audience. In other words, this heckler is now making American foreign policy. By goading Biden into a public response like that, I think we need a pause. We should have a ceasefire, Israel. Stop fighting the terrorists. Go ahead and cave into Hamas for a little while, pause, and let the terrorists regroup and send more rockets and send more, more assassins. You gotta be kidding. No, there should be no pause. Uh, Israel has been retaliating against Gaza terrorists since the 7 October Hamas attacks, which Hamas initiated, Israel did not. They killed 1,400 Jews, and they saw more than 239 taken hostage. That's the news, our thanks to BBC and Politico for that report. Let's take a moment and discern the spirits. Uh, in this story, you have BB on one side, you have Joe Biden on the other side, you have a heckler in the crowd. Those are the human actors. Where are the non-human spirits? How do you discern the spirit of God, the angels, the demons in this story? We do it through the lens of biblical morality as it influences the choices of the human actors. So let's say, for example, you're Joe Biden and you're the president of the United States and you're on the, on the stage giving a speech about the question of a ceasefire in Israel. It's a, it's a legitimate topic. The president should maybe have an opinion on this. But instead, this demonic influenced heckler from the crowd comes up and says, Joe, don't you think Israel ought to surrender? I mean, not in those words, but don't you think there ought to be a ceasefire? We demand a ceasefire. The heckler is doing this. Well, the demons themselves are demanding a ceasefire. Of course they are. They want dead Jews. The terrorists are killing Jews. And, and Israel's not allowed to defend themselves. So Joe Biden, in that moment, he had a choice. 
He could have listened to the Spirit of God and said, no, you know what, American foreign policy is gonna to be to stand with Israel. And he said that in the past, that is our policy. He could have stood his ground and said, I'm sorry, Mr. Demonic Heckler, you stand down. We're gonna continue our foreign policy of supporting. Instead, in that moment of decision, Joe Biden listens to the demon on his shoulder and says, oh, oh, there's a heckler. Well, I don't wanna be criticized. His fear of criticism by the crowd causes him to change American policy on the stage in an instant. Now he's saying, Israel, you need to have a ceasefire. You've gotta be kidding. Here's a man with no spiritual discernment of the voice that is speaking to him, the devil himself now speaking through Joe Biden and standing against Netanyahu, standing against Israel, as if he is our president? No, sir. We are not going to stand with the demons that are influencing Joe Biden. We're gonna stand with the voice of the Lord who spoke to the prophet Zephaniah. In chapter two, the Bible says, the coast shall be for the remnant of the house of Judah. The coast, every time they say the coast, they're talking about the Gaza Strip. They shall feed their flocks there. In the houses of Ashkelon, they shall lie down at evening. The, the Jews, the house of Judah is gonna do this. For the Lord their God will intervene for them and return, there it is everybody, their hostages, their captives. God is gonna return the hostages and the Jews are going to have shepherd and grazing land in the Gaza Strip. Zephaniah 2 is where it's at. Let's pray about this. Father in heaven, we pray for American foreign policy to, be, to continue to stand strong with Israel and not be influenced by demonic hecklers and not have a president who listens to the demons and spouts off on stage and changes American policy on a whim, no. Father, we pray for steadfast resolve in our government to stand with God's government in Israel. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's take another short break. When we come back, Planned Parenthood, not only doing abortions, but siding with Hamas. This is PIJN News, defending your religious freedom. Dr. Chaps will be right back. I'm excited to announce that we're having our biggest Christmas sale ever. You get our brand new six piece My Towels for only $29.98. Or rejuvenate your bed with a My Pillow mattress topper as low as $99.99. Or how about My Pillow bed sheets for as low as $24.98? There's something for everyone. Duvets, quilts, down comforters, body pillows, bolster pillows, and so much more. Well, I know my pillow products make for the perfect Christmas gifts, so I'm going to extend my money back guarantee until March 1st, 2024. So go to mypillow.com now or call the number on your screen. Use your promo code to get huge discounts on all my pillow products. For example, you get our six piece towels for only $29.98. Or get your very own my pillow bed sheets for as low as twenty four ninety eight. It's our biggest Christmas sale ever. Get all your shopping done now while quantities last. Hi, I'm Dr. Chaps. I want to introduce my friend Mike Lindell, who wants to help support our ministry and the work of PIJN News. Uh, Mike, what do you think? Well, I think everybody out there, y'all need to get behind Pray in Jesus Names Ministry. Dr. Chaps here with this great ministry needs your support and you can you should donate to it. You can also use your promo code Pray News and anything you're getting from my pillow with big discounts, a lot of those proceeds are coming right back. I'm gonna put them right back into this into your amazing charity and show. My employees and I are excited to announce it's our 20th anniversary. And to celebrate, we're bringing you a limited edition MyPillow. The Giza Elegance MyPillow is made with the most amazing cotton. Two inch pipe gusset comes in four custom loft levels and it's machine washable and dryable. When I got my pillow, I'm asleep almost immediately. I stay asleep at night and I wake up more well rested in the morning. My patented fill adjusts to your exact individual needs and helps keep your neck supported in the line. That's why we've been around for 20 years because my pillow works. Go to mypillow.com or call the number on your screen. Use your promo code to get your limited edition 20th anniversary my pillow queen size. Retails for 69.98, now only 19.98. That's right, only 19.98. With my 60-day money back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Sleep well, America. Defending your religious freedom. Here is Dr. Chaps. Welcome back. I'm Dr. Chaps. Our last story today comes from westernjournal.com. Her reports 
Planned Parenthood has now joined the Hamas terrorists in condemning Israel after an Israel, Israeli airstrike on a, a nearby rocket terrorist base caused a cloud of dust to settle over a Planned Parenthood abortion clinic in the Gaza Strip. Why is Planned Parenthood funding abortions among the Arabs in the Gaza Strip? Well, they have their reasons, but why should the Hamas terrorist hide behind the abortion clinic and then complain when Israel attacks the terrorists and, and dusts up, causes a little cloud of dust to settle over the abortion clinic? All this uproar is reported by a Western Journal who says Planned Parenthood is the world's largest global abortion giant, not just in America, but overseas they're now joining Hamas in a new fundraising effort, raising American dollars to pay for more abortions in Gaza and blaming Israel for causing damage when a bombing a terrorist building near their Planned Parenthood headquarters in Gaza. This after over 1,400 Israelis have died by the, uh, the Hamas terrorist assault, according to Wall Street Journal. And at least 27 Americans have also died there. 27 dead Americans in that Gaza terrorist attack. That's like the fourth largest terrorist attack on Americans. Israel's response was swift, organized, and unapologetic. They came in hot with airstrikes on their Hamas rocket launching locations, but not without warning the innocent civilians to leave Gaza or risk death. Sure, the Planned Parenthood clinic was vacated and empty because Israel gives advance warning before they strike back. So they evacuated the civilians. Israel doesn't bomb the civilians like Hamas terrorists kill civilians. In the midst of all that, the International Planned Parenthood Federation website is now complaining that their building in Gaza has been dusted, clouded with dust, not really destroyed, but some, some fallout, some broken glass, let's just call it that. They're gonna restore, they're gonna keep doing abortions in Gaza. But the organization claims this horrible loss is going to result in 37,000 pregnant women being forced to give birth with no access to abortions. Oh my gosh, this is the big tragedy that they want Americans to, to pay for? Big fundraiser, give more to Planned Parenthood so we can kill 37,000 children in Gaza through abortions there. Hamas owns the horrible situation these women and babies have been placed in. My question is, why is Hamas launching rockets from buildings right next to the Planned Parenthood medical offices? Amal Awadala, who is the executive director of the Palestinian Family Planning and Protection Association, say that five times fast, the PFPPA is designated as the culprit in these unfortunate circumstances to be Israel. They're blaming Israel as the occupier. According to Awadala's statement, he said, quote, on 8 October, our only center in Gaza was destroyed, not really destroyed, but he says it was destroyed, following an Israeli airstrike to an adjacent building, not our building, but the precision bombers hit the right building, not the Planned Parenthood building, completely cutting off their ability to offer abortions to women who've already been systematically denied abortions and their right to kill their children by the Israeli occupation, end quote. There they are, they're calling it an occupation and he used that disaster to plea for more donations to Planned Parenthood. That's the news from Western Journal. Let me show you a map. I hate this idea that they're blaming Israel as the occupiers of the land. This is a map of all of the Arab countries in the world. From North Africa all the way to over to the Emirates, you see, and this doesn't even include Iran, right? But just the Arab, speaking nations are all in green. You see where Israel is? It's the tiny red country, no bigger than New Jersey. And they say Israel is occupying their own land? Israel's not the occupiers, they're surrounded. The Arabs could go to any one of these other nations and leave the Jews alone, but instead they want to push the Jews into the sea. And, and it's not Israel, by the way, Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria. The Bible traces these back to the time of Abraham, 3,000 years ago. 
the Jews have owned this land. It's their land, Hamas. It's not your land. And God has promised this in Amos 9. Here's an encouraging scripture. God will plant Israel in their own land, never again to be uprooted from the land I have given them, says the Lord. This is a prophecy that's coming true in our day. God has given them back their own land. But God is condemning Gaza, also prophesied by Amos in chapter one, verse six. Thus says the Lord, why is God against Gaza? For three transgressions of Gaza, and for four, I will not turn away its punishment. I'm gonna punish them for their four transgressions. One of them is because they took captive the whole captivity, they took hostages to deliver them up to Eden. They took hostages, and, and by the way, abortion may be another one of their transgressions. Why is God against Gaza? Because they're taking hostages and killing their own children. Planned Parenthood, you are causing the problems, and God will condemn that. We're out of time, but let's uh, take a short break and I'll have a word to conclude the show. Do you need a physical or spiritual healing? Are you being tested or tried? When Jesus needed to pray, he went to the Garden of Gethsemane. Do you need to really connect with God? If you're visiting Colorado Springs, come see the Gateway Prayer Garden just south of the city along Interstate 25. Walk our prayer trails among the trees by the beautiful Fountain Creek. Stand at the foot of our large cross and connect with Jesus. Enter our life-size replica of the empty tomb and spend time reading key Bible verses etched in stone along our ground cross as big as a football field. Join our worship gatherings and plan to attend our annual Easter sunrise worship service. We're located off I-25, exit 132A at 8035 Bandley Road, just north of the KOA campground. Experience Jesus at gatewayprayergarden.org. That's gatewayprayergarden.org. He is the intersection of church and state. Here is Dr. Chaps. Thank you for watching and thank you for standing with us with your financial support. We need your donations, large or small, to bring you these kind of pro-Israel reports. This is not a common news program. We pray the news in Jesus' name. The Bible says in 1 Chronicles 29, then the people rejoiced for they offered willingly because with a loyal heart they offered willingly to the Lord. Please give your, your offerings willingly with a joyful heart out of loyalty to God. Please donate today at PrayInJesusName.org or call us toll free at 866-Obey-God. We'll see you next time. Dr. Chaps needs your financial support to stay on the air. Would you please send your best financial donation today? Please visit PrayInJesusName.org to donate online. Or you can mail a check to Pray In Jesus Name Ministries, Post Office Box 77077, Colorado Springs, Colorado 80970. You can also call us toll free right now, 866-Obey-God. That's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. Please sign up for our free emails at PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org.